more. This one is um, Lawbacher and Associates Architects, 15.59 acres. Request to change from commercial to commercial mixed use. Mr. Thank Baca? you. Yes, thank you, Mayor McDonald. Thank you. Sorry for the interruption. So, the uh, applicant, Lauterbach and Associates, uh, represented by Mark Pettit, has filed a general plan amendment referral request that the general plan land use designation of general commercial be changed or considered uh, for a referral for additional study to commercial mixed use for 15 and a half acres of the northern portion of the Central Plaza Shopping Center um, in place of the existing 110,000 square foot Kmart store location and its surrounding parking. <clears throat> so the concept that's proposed is to uh, begin the process to work on a mixed use high density residential development. Again, it will be in the northern portion of an approximate 15 and a half acre site that's specifically occupied by the existing Kmart store. Um, we understand that this property um, would potentially be vacated within the next three years with the closure of the Kmart store. And the applicant has indicated that the type of land use proposed would be consistent with the Camarillo Common Strategic Plan and compatible with uh, some of the existing land uses within this area. In addition to the proposed general plan amendment, if this proposal is referred for further study, this application will likely necessitate a zone change, a residential plan development permit application. Um, typically a land division would be included in the analysis and uh, environmental review subject to CEQA. This aerial photograph shows the site. So at the north uh, east corner of Arneal and Ponderosa and you can see the Kmart building um, in the yellow hatching. So the existing land uses surrounding the property include low density single family detached housing neighborhoods to the north and a low medium density detached residential neighborhood to the west, a low medium density attached townhome project to the east and the central plaza retail shopping center to the south. And um, as indicated previously, the Kmart store has indicated they anticipate closing within the next three years. The existing designation of the property is commercial and the existing zoning is commercial plan development. So now um, we would recommend that the city council consider this referral request and either allow it to continue for further analysis or deny the referral and if necessary provide any additional direction that is uh, recommended by the council. That concludes staff's presentation on this. Mr. Baca, can you tell us again how many units are we looking at, residential units? There is no number specified at this time. Okay, how about potential? Uh, it could what potentially it go up to 30 units per acre, although this is proposed to be commercial mixed use. So... If it were to be a maximum, that would be around 450 or so, and then with additional commercial. 450 plus commercial? Yes. Okay. Do we have any questions of staff? 50 units? How many? If it, was, if it was built at a maximum of 30 uh, units per acre at the 15 and a half. So 15 acres. Well, times 30. Oh, yeah, be, Council, actually, I would really like to understand from the applicant what that number could be. Okay. They obviously have a number. Uh, they probably worked a preliminary pro forma. It would probably be good to hear from them. Okay. Because 450, um, uh, you know, if you've it's got crazy. commercial, if you've got on the ground floor, you're, it's it's overestimating. Okay. There's too many. So um, many. if... Uh, if the applicant have does have that, we, maybe we can get that answered. Do we have any questions of staff? I would just like to clarify that if you look at their preliminary site plan, they are showing apartments on Fiesta Drive, and then it'd be a commercial mixed use around the perimeter near the shopping center. 
it looks like the end of the building where uh, Kmart was, or was, is going not to be, <laughs> is where the, uh, where the storage room was. You know, where the parking lot at the far east end? I think that this stuck out there as part of their story where they went back and stored stuff. Because I think it took over Round Table Pizza right there. Well, let's ask him. They're gone. Okay. Um, all right, let's start with the um, architect for the project, Mark Pettit. Good evening, Mayor and City Council members and staff. My name is Mark Pettit, and I'm an architect with Lauterbach and Associates Architects, and we're here representing uh, Kenny Slot and Sear Investments, um, also uh, Vestec, who's part of their management. As you know, Vestec Sphere has multiple properties throughout the city, including um, the corner property, which we recently had an approval on, uh, the old gas station, and uh, they also own the Target Center on the other side of town. Uh. So uh, we've been working and looking at this, what to do with this property for a number of years since um, everything's been in the newspaper with uh, the existing tenant. And what we wanted to do is be proactive. So with a little less now than three years left on the lease um, and understanding the time frame and the cost and everything involved with this, we thought it would be appropriate to um, get the ball rolling and taking a look at what other opportunities there would be. Um, the uh, owner did take a look at maybe replacing the tenant, but the building is 100 and, almost 110,000 square feet. The dimensions are really not appropriate for the type of retail client that would locate in this area and if there was a client that or a tenant that would be that big they would probably want to go to the freeway and that's just the way of retail these days so what we looked at um, is what our neighbor has <coughs> over at the Camarillo uh, Commons area and looking at that and saying what can we do to make that better um, so we were looking at keeping more of this the same small town kind of shopping center with smaller shops restaurants courtyards but also truly doing a mixed use with residential on the second floor as it faces the shopping center so adding more landscape and more activity areas that some of the newer shopping centers have the area that we're talking about is about three acres. The remainder of the shopping center, or about 12 and a half acres, would be uh, part of a remodel program, but those, are, those tenants have long-term leases. Um, as you know, there's a grocery store and a drug store, and that's not part of our residential program. So right now, we're looking at about three acres, as was outlined in the yellow. And um, as such, between 18 and 30 units to the acre, you know, so probably somewhere around 90 units, 80 units, That's something like that is what we would be looking at. Um, so we are looking at pulling the building out towards the street to Arneal to give it a street frontage and then creating a series of shops, restaurants, as I mentioned. But we also have Fiesta in the back. And right now, when you drive down Fiesta, you've got an almost two-story blank block building. It looks like an alley. So what we're looking at is what can we do to take that and really activate that street and make it look like a residential street instead of an alley. And so uh, one of the concepts is to come in with uh, um, a project that would have maybe two-story apartment units on that side that would uh, blend in with the existing neighborhood and then as we kind of move in kind of on the other side uh, facing the parking lot would have the second floor maybe even a third floor element tower elements that would be above the commercial so once again looking at uh, smaller commercial spaces retail restaurants um, something that the center um, kind of lacks right now and I think would be a big improvement um, the shopping center has a little over 800 parking spaces. The Kmart makes up about 430 of those spaces. And 
what we would be doing by replacing that, we would be adding additional parking spaces and not necessarily uh, eliminating a lot of parking spaces. So we would have plenty of parking that would be in a, a potentially shared use agreement, but we don't believe that the parking will be a problem at all and that we'll have plenty of parking to deal with, with the commercial and with the apartments. Um, as a preliminary idea, we were thinking somewhere between 30 and 40,000 square foot of retail and shops um, that would be part of the project. So we think we have an advantage here because there's really just one owner entity. We don't have 60 yeah. like they have across the street. So this has a real chance of becoming something. And we spent a lot of time talking about, well, what could this be? And right now we don't know. Um, and um, uh, we have an expert in real estate apartments that's going to be speaking uh, in a few minutes that uh, the owner kind of commissioned to kind of take a look and do a study. What does Camarillo need? And um, of course, I've got two kids. I'd like them to stay in Camarillo. I'd like to see, uh, it was mentioned before, micro apartments. Uh, which the city does have an ordinance that has that, so that's great to see. So we're looking at maybe a variety of different product types, but because of where this is in the center of the city, with a grocery store, with a drug store, with restaurants, coffee shop, all those are already there, uh, I think it's a great location. So... Um, We think it's good. Uh, it's a um, anytime we can take a look at a project and make it a, a higher and better use. The look, I think we have a, a good site here. It's center of the city. Um, obviously, you know we want to be able to develop in the city and not develop into the um, farm areas. So we think we have a, a a good piece of property here. So. At the end of the day, once this project goes through, which we think will obviously take probably four to five years, if not more, um, maybe the city will be in a different uh, housing element cycle, and so some of these units can be added to that uh, new housing cycle. And also, hopefully the new building will be built on the corner where the gas station is, and we set the architecture, the tone of that building so that the whole center will be unified as a, a something that I think you'd be proud of in the city. So with that, I'm happy to answer any questions, questions. and thank you for your consideration. I think we have some questions. Thank you. Um, so you're talking about just developing a plan, us referring only the part of the shopping center that has Kmart and the, the associated property right now, not the rest of it. Oops, excuse me. At, at this time, it's one parcel, with the exception of the gas station, which the, is not This referral this. we're talking about. It is strictly for the Kmart area, which is approximately three acres. Three acres out of the 15 or whatever. 15 and a half. Okay, so you're only talking about a part of the parcel. We're not able to change the rest of it at this time. Okay. And my other question is, has Kmart act or has Sears or whoever owns Kmart now uh, actually given a notice that at the end of the lease they are not interested in renewing it, or is this based on supposition? They, they were, or they do, they don't plan to re, the the owner doesn't plan to renew it with Kmart no matter what. Correct. Yep. It's too bad. <laughs> The, okay, um, that's that's the, my comment. The word on the street, obviously, and you read it in the newspapers, is will they last the three years? Right. So unfortunately, that's the way of the world, I guess. This is one of the strongest Kmart's there is, but I'm not going to argue that part. Yeah. Neither will I. <laughs> are Those back? are all my questions. Thank you, Mr. Morgan. I like uh, what you've done here on the entryway down the corner, <clears throat> in the pink area. You get that in, that goes into the parking lot, and also in the back gives you. Easy access from stores to from the rest from the uh, apartments and so on. Now the rest of these the, on the rest of the center here with the parking lot behind them. Of course, the uh, there's got to be exits out of the back of some of these stores that go to these parking spots. Is that correct? Correct. Okay, that's all. Mr. Trimley. 
Well, sort of a, hi, Mr. Pettit, sort of a related question. Um, the parking area that is right adjacent to Coffee Bean, yes. <laughs> you know, and that whole, that whole section, uh, which is immediately to the south of the okay. pink area in, in the rendering that you've provided to the council. I'm just curious, with that whole field of parking, how would one control that? I mean, if, if I'm living, if, if I was living in, in an apartment back off of Fiesta or, or, or in one of the, one of the uh, mixed use areas, like on the second floor of the pink area, I don't quite understand how that would work from a parking I'm not standpoint. sure that we understand all of the different parking we're going to have. This is probably only because I have trouble when I go to Coffee Bean finding, <laughs> making sure I go in the right direction. Well, it's striped in the wrong direction to begin with. Well, that, that probably says more about my driving than anything else, but, but in all seriousness. Yeah, um, as far as the parking for um, the commercial area, obviously that field of parking that is existing um, may be modified slightly to create a little bit better flow pattern, but it's going to remain uh -huh. significantly where it is. The residential portion, the parking for the most part is going to be in the back and we're looking at having a significant amount of parking that would uh, meet the qualifications or the quantities needed for the apartment project. Right. So obviously visitors come, they can park in the front, I guess, or in the main parking, but for the most part the residents, the goal is to have that as a somewhat uh, separated parking area and if you've been to the existing shopping center there's a large field of parking in the back of the building uh, when I say back that would be the east side of the building yep. and so um, we're not at this point looking at making any significant modifications in that existing parking area you get better ways of getting to it too in this plan well I we're trying to that. connect it so that yeah. the neighbors the residents and the people mm -hmm. in the shopping have connection points. So right okay. now it's it's blocked by the building, so yep. you can't really use it. So in this case, we're looking at having paseos that would kind of connect the existing parking to the apartments and then even to the neighbors. Much better. Mr. Chairman, you, still have, you have a few more? Thank you. I just have I have an additional question, but totally separate. Thanks for the answer on that, Mr. Bennett. Um, has the applicant, um, to your knowledge, uh, planned any kind of a community engagement process Absolutely. with the well listen to the rest of my question first <laughs> no that's okay I mean I, I used to live in that Arneo Ranch area and this is a different project this is distinguishable from what we were just talking about at Camino Ruiz because here you are on all three sides if the map were back the Google Earth were back up uh, of, of straight residential, community uh, of residential. And to me, a very robust community engagement process would be critically important. Has the applicant thought about that or we planned for that? We just thought about it, but we've started it. Could you elaborate? Um, there are four people that I know that live in the area that I have contacted and have uh, asked for their assistance as we, if in fact we were to be referred to set up neighborhood meetings and so on and to help us with the development process. We always have a better project when we involve neighbors. Yep. Okay, thanks. That's obviously why I, it's, it's, that's critically important to me. Anyway, I'll, I'll go to comments later. Thanks for answering the questions. Thank you. I have a question. Anything, Mr. Kildee? Yeah, sometimes the financing when you do projects like this gets kind of challenging. Have you thought that through? Um, I haven't just the architect, uh, <laughs> but the developer owner owns residential, commercial, shopping centers in multiple states, and um, they have done this before. So, uh, and that's one of the reasons why it's an apartment as opposed to a for sale. It's easier to deal with it in this way, mm -hmm. so, as one parcel. Okay. Just to clarify and make sure I understand. And my drawing didn't get pink, so I have blue and white. <laughs> um, but the blue are just apartments, so they'd probably be two-story, probably. That's, that's what we're looking at. Off of Fiesta would be more of the um, standalone apartment component okay. with the green space, courtyards in between. And then the 
area, the buildings that have the commercial would, would have residential up above it. Those would be the buildings facing the parking lot uh, because the property is just so deep that it, it, it doesn't really warrant you know, one big building going mm -hmm. all the way across. Mm -hmm. Plus, we wanted to have some private spaces and you know, kind of have a nice courtyard, Mediterranean Spanish design. So it wouldn't necessarily have to, on the commercial restaurant side, have solid apartments. As you build well, your building, it correct. could um, different. And we, we had looked at you know, having some areas that might have a story and a half of the commercial and then other portions with two stories and maybe a tower element that might have a penthouse or a three-story component, you know, really just making it all different elevations. Yeah. yeah. That'd be nice. Question? I just have one other comment on your parking. You know, when you're talking about where would the, the people who live there park, you could have one heck of a party and not have to worry about parking. Exactly. Yes. <laughs> Mr. Morgan. Yes. Um, the way it looks with two stories in the back, the people living behind it has had to face that one that's more than two story, the, the Kmart building itself. Yeah, it's about two story block blank wall. Right. And so I, I would think that they'd like this better than that block blank wall. So. You've, you're hitting that, hopefully. Good. Okay. Question? Thank you very much. Thank you. So to go back to your question, Mayor, so I apologize. I was calculating it based on the 15 acres, mm -hmm. but at three acres, it would be up to a maximum of 90. Uh, That's consistent math. with what the applicant said. Okay, good. Thank you. 90 units? 90 yes. units on the three acres, right? Yes. Total. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep, excellent. Um, our next speaker is Don Dwyer. Good evening, Madam Mayor, Council Members. My name is Dawn Dyer. I'm president of Dyer Sheehan Group in Ventura. We're land use experts and housing market analysts. And there's been quite a bit of discussion this evening about vacancy rates for different types of property and you know some questions about apartments in particular. And so I'm here this evening, as uh, Mark indicated, we're preparing a, a market feasibility study for the owner of this property to examine not only the feasibility of the multifamily use, but you know, to kind of provide some recommendations on what type of apartments and mixture of amenities might be a great fit here. And so I just wanted to cut, touch on a couple of things that may be um, helpful for you as you're considering these decisions. Uh, first of all, my firm does track the apartment market in Ventura County. We've been doing that for about almost 20 years now. We track about 20,000 apartment units across the county. And one of the reasons you're seeing so many apartment <coughs> projects right now is just basic economics 101, supply versus demand. So as I'm sure you're all very well aware, um, not only here locally, but at a statewide level, we simply haven't been keeping pace with the need for housing. And in particular, um, there have been a lot of shifts in the type of housing that we need. Um, here in Ventura County, one of the ways that we can demonstrate that there's a f severe shortage of apartments is by the vacancy rate, which currently is 2.6%. Um, here in the city of Camarillo, it's actually 2.2%. And the issue is that it's been well below 5% for virtually every year that I've stayed in the market. Um, we had one year see, when was it? Uh, January of 09, just at the end of the recession, where the vacancy rate went to 5.8%. It's the only time we've even been above 5%. And that's important because that's considered to be equilibrium in the market, where there's sufficient choice for renters, and yet there's still um, strong economic return for the property owners. So what happens then, if we have a shortage of housing, is that um, prices go up much more rapidly. And we have seen that here as well. Um, while price appreciation moderated a bit last year, as it did throughout the country, rates went up 3.6%. The prior year, we had an 8.5% increase in Ventura County. And uh, if you look back between, um, like since 2010 to our 2017 report, rents have gone up 35% in Ventura County. That's $470 a month. Here in Camarillo, rents jumped even faster than the countywide average. Uh, you went up about 5.5% last year, and over the two-year period,